All right, here we go. We are gonna do two-dimensional arrays in Java. So we're gonna jump into some code. We're gonna introduce the topic of two-dimensional arrays, talk about how they work in Java. Ideally, before you see this lesson, you should already be at least at a mid-range comfort level with uh, one-dimensional arrays in Java. Otherwise, you're gonna find that uh, this is not gonna make any sense whatsoever. All right, let's jump into the code and get started. So I've created a class. I've called it 2D Arrays and uh, we're going to go through and we're going to create this class together. So we're going to start with our instance variables, our fields, and we're going to create a couple. We're going to create a couple of integers to measure the rows and columns in our two-dimensional array. So we'll do private int rows calls. Uh, again, just declaring, not initializing, and I'll do the same with my array. Now my array is going to look like this. Private, I'm going to do a string array. It's a two-dimensional array, which means I do double box notation. I'll call it my array. And I'm not initializing it. I'm just declaring it right now. All right. So private string array, two-dimensional array. That's the double boxes called my array. So I've set that up so I can come back to it later. Inside my constructor, I'm asking them to give me an R and a C value, which is obviously going to be my rows and my columns. So I can do rows equals R, calls equals C to assign my instance variables to the parameters of the constructor. And then I want to initialize my two-dimensional array. Now, just like one-dimensional arrays, in Java, we have to give the size of the array at the time of initialization. And we can't change that size later. So the rows and columns value that are given, we're going to kind of reserve that block of memory, and we're going to set it aside. And then later, we can't just suddenly add onto it. We would have to create a whole new array and copy everything over. It's not the same as an array list or a list in Python, which are dynamic uh, ways of doing data structures. This is a fixed or a static way. So I'm going to do my array equals new string array rows calls. Okay, so this is initializing the array. Now, because it's full of class objects, so string is a class, so it's not a primitive data type. So it's going to default to null values. So at this point, the array is full of null values. So that's fine. We just need to be aware of that so that we can actually add content to the array. So let's talk briefly about notation. So we use a row column notation here. Now, if you've done matrices, you've seen this before. If you haven't done matrices, this might be a bit foreign to you. And we'll look at an example in a minute kind of to see how this stuff is laid out. Let's fill our array with some values. So I'm going to call a fill array method, and then I'm going to write the fill array method. Public void fill array. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of make essentially what would amount to a tic-tac-toe board, except it won't be exactly a tic-tac-toe board because we're not forcing them to make it a three by three board. So we're just going to fill everything with a space right now. And then we'll go back in later and we can put X's and O's in place. So we're going to do a nested loop. So we're going to do four int I equals zero I less than now. When I want to do my rows, now I, I have a variable stored for rows and calls, which is awesome. I can use those variables so I can loop through each row. So rows, I plus plus, and then I can loop through the columns, int j equals zero, j less than calls, j plus plus. And then inside this nested loop is essentially going to say, set the row value to zero, and then loop through the columns. Okay, so before we go any further, let's look at the structure of these two-dimensional arrays. So here I've got a little two-dimensional array. So I want to talk about rows. Rows come down here. The index of the rows start counting at zero. And the index of the columns start counting at zero, too. When I look at the notation for this, essentially what I'm doing is this is my outer loop here is looping through the row values. And then for each one of these, I'm then going to loop through all of the column values. So when row is 0, I'm going to loop through column 0, 1, 2, 3. Then row becomes 1, and I loop through that way. So I'm kind of traversing it in this across pattern using this row in the outer loop, column in the inner loop structure. And if you consider any value, say this one here, this would have a row value of 1 and a call value of 2. Right, row one, column two would be the value that's in that position. So that's kind of how the notation works, and that's why we're looping through the way that we are. Another thing that's worth noting is that you have to think of this whole thing here, this whole row, 
is an array. Okay, it's an array of strings, and this whole row is an array. Okay, and that repeats all the way down. So really what we have is an array filled with arrays, just like when we did lists of lists. So we have things like the dot length method that we can call on an array. There's other methods we can call on an array too. It's important to note that we can call that on the big array or on the little arrays. And so we can do something like, instead of using rows, we could have done myArray.length. MyArray is the big array. Dot length is gonna tell me how many items are in it. Now each of those items happens to be an array of its own. The columns we could do my array box zero dot length. My array box zero represents that first row, the item that's first in the big array, which is another array, which represents that top row. And the length of that would be how many columns you have. So there's two different ways you can do it. You can, I've used a field variable for rows and columns, which is great, but you can also use the dot length. But make sure you know if you're doing the variable name dot length, you're finding the number of rows. If you're doing variable name box zero dot length, you're finding the number of columns because you're in that array that's stored at the top of the big array, which is the first row. So now inside of this, I'm just gonna fill everything with spaces. So I'm gonna do my array box i box j equals space, semicolon. So I've now filled my array with spaces. Now printing my array is gonna be basically the same code, except here I'm just gonna do a print. Now I'm gonna do a system.out.print and I'm gonna print my array box i box j. And then outside, and then I'm gonna add a comma. And then outside, I'm gonna do a system.out.print line. All right, and that way I get some kind of separation between the rows. Now this comma is great. I might wanna put in like a, if j equals my array, or actually I'll just do calls uh, minus one. Then I don't wanna use the comma because it's the last term in the line. And then actually I could just do a print ln here. I could ditch this and then I'll put this in an else statement. So inside my loop, if I'm on the last item, then don't put the comma and do a print ln to jump to the next line. Otherwise, just do a print with the item and then a comma. So we're gonna fill it and then we're gonna print it. All right, so we're gonna put that inside of our, actually, you know what, let's ditch these. Let's put them in our object in our main method. So here's my main method down here. I'm gonna construct an object to my class, 2D arrays, um, my obj equals new 2D arrays. And I'll make a three by three. So I'm gonna do my obj dot fill array, and then my obj dot print array. All right, and we'll run this code and see what happens. So we see, again, it's all spaces, so it looks ridiculous right now. Okay, you could add other things to make it look pretty, but right now it's just full of spaces, beautiful. So let's add some values to this thing, or maybe let's let's put some uh, little lines in here instead. Put little lines in here before, maybe make that look a little bit more like put together. Okay, so let's do the add to array method that I've written here. I want it to take a row and a column value and a string, and we're gonna add that if there's no conflict. So essentially what I'm gonna do is throw in an if statement. We're gonna do if my array box r box c dot equals equals space. So if it's equal to a space, that means it's free and I can put something in it. My array box r box c is now equal to v and we'll return true because it was successful else we'll just return false because we weren't able to put the value in there because there was already something there. 
So this is a pretty simple method that's gonna add something to the array if there isn't already something in that box. So down here, I might wanna do a fill array and then a my obj dot add to array. And I'm gonna go in box row one, column two, and let's add an X into that position. And then we'll print the array and see that that works. So run that. And we can see that that X is in that position now, right? So you can start to see how we can fill in that array using this. Now, if I try to override that, put an O in that same position. Now we're not dealing with a return yet. We'll do that in a second. You'll see it did not override it. So that's a good sign. Now technically when I call this, I should be taking the value. So I should be doing something like, you know, print out the result so that I know that it actually worked or did not work. Or maybe storing it a variable to confirm that it worked or didn't work. So I run that and now I'll see true, it worked and then it prints the array. All right, so I get that true false, which I could then use in a while loop. I could use it in all kinds of situations. Maybe I was getting the user to input a value for the row and column that they wanted to insert something. Again, you got the makings at the beginning of a tic-tac-toe game here. But the important piece that I want you to take away from all this is declaring and initializing, understanding the fixed size, understanding how to traverse using for loops, the rows and column values, and also understanding how to access uh, those row column values based on them and also maybe using loops to compare before and afters and all that kind of craziness. Hopefully that helps the understanding of two-dimensional arrays. Good luck with it. We'll see you back here real, real soon. Have a good one.